Tonight, I want to go Oh, actually, I want to look into the Earth's magnetic field that we all take for granted. Without it, we couldn't exist. If you have the first picture, put it up. Without the Earth's magnetic field, we couldn't exist. There you see the sun on the left hand side, solar flares coming out of it and the solar wind reaching out not only to Earth, our moon, but beyond that. And then you have the Earth magnetic field. You can see in those circle lines that surrounds the Earth. Simply put, it's a shield around the earth and without that shield we we all be toast no pun intended life could not exist on planet earth without this shield this magnetic field that protects us day in, day out. Before I start studying all these related subjects concerning the creation and the age of the universe, it never really dawned on me to thank God for the magnetic field that he's provided which gives me the opportunity to be alive because without it like I said we'd be toast we couldn't survive without it one of these days I told myself I'm going to start making a list of things of everything that I could be thankful for. You come back to me now. Everything that I could be thankful for that God created for my benefit. It would be an inexhaustible list. A never-ending list of thanks to God. Of all the different things. I don't think I could ever even finish that list just to have life on this planet and everything that's in this planet for our benefit is mind-blowing is the only thing I could come up with <clears throat> if I just stayed in the sciences all the fields of sciences of science and it's different categories. It would take me five years, easy, just to teach on those things that God has provided for us, for our benefit. One of them having me in this magnetic field. I want to read to you some from two different sources. And maybe if you haven't already, you can start appreciating the magnetic field that God created for us. Most people have some familiarity with magnets, like the kind that stick to a refrigerated door. I know when I was a kid, when I first started getting into magnets, my first magnet, I, you probably did this too, I went everywhere around the house. I lived in a three-story house at the time, an old colonial house back in New Jersey. On every floor, I just kept seeing what this magnet would stick to. 
And then when I got done with the inside, I went on the outside. Now, I was just a young kid. It's only on certain surfaces, and you could determine fairly quickly what those surfaces would be that it would grasp itself to. And you have to use some force to peel it off that surface. But being a young kid, I was very fascinated with it. Now, that's just, just the story of me being just a kid. That's coming up into the knowledge of something that I didn't even know existed until I had it in my hands. I heard about it, but never gave it a thought until I had one in my hands, and I was fascinated what this magnet could do. Never realizing that's just a small sample of a lot bigger picture what magnetism is all about. Let me continue. Magnets have an almost magical ability to attract other magnets or certain metals separated by a distance. They seem to reach out over space and pull with invisible fingers. The region of space surrounding a magnet which exerts a force in other magnets is called a man magnetic field. Magnetic fields are caused by electric current motion of charged particles. The Earth's magnetic field is approximated by a dipole, D-I-P-O-L-E, D-I-P-O-L-E, meaning the magnet has one north pole and one south pole. Put up the second picture. That gives you an illustration what a dipole looks like. You have a magnetic north and south pole and you have just a north and south pole. The magnetic north and south pole is a little skewed to the right in this picture. And you can see it there and that's what a dipole in a picture form. Picture paints a thousand words sometimes. What it looks like. The dipole is roughly aligned with the Earth's rotation axis, being off about 11.5 degrees, and that's why it's tilted there to the right. That is, the north magnetic pole is close to the north rotation pole. That is why a compass points approximately north. It aligns with a geometric magnetic field. You come back to me now. This magnetic field surrounds the Earth and is an important design feature. The universe contains radiation, which is harmful to living tissues. Earth's magnetic field protects life by deflecting dangerous cosmic radiation. The atmosphere also offers some protection. The Earth's magnetic field is caused by electric currents within its interior. Such currents encounter electric resistance, and so they naturally decay with time. We would therefore expect that an Earth's magnetic field to become weaker as time progresses. We have been able to measure the strength of the magnetic field for over a century. And not surprisingly, the Earth's magnetic field is indeed decaying. Every century, the magnetic field decays by about 5%. Since the Earth's magnetic field gets weaker as time moves forward, it must have been considerably stronger in the past. Approximately 6,000 6, years ago, the magnetic field would have been quite a lot stronger, but still perfectly suited for life. However, if the Earth were many million years old, not even considering billions, but it's just thick millions, However, if the Earth were many millions of years old, then the geomagnetic field would have been so strong in that alleged distance past that life would not have been possible. I'll read that to you again. Approximately 6,000 years ago, the magnetic field would have been quite a lot stronger but still perfectly suitable for life. However, if the Earth were many million years old, 
then the geomagnetic field would have been so strong in that alleged distance past that life would not have been possible. Getting around the magnetic field evidence. The straightforward interpretation that the Earth is not billions of years old is, of course, an intolerable conclusion for evolutionists. Additional assumptions are therefore required to explain evidence within the naturalist world's view. So far, however, the secular explanations have not been able to endure careful scrutiny. For example, some secular Scientists have suggested that only the dipole component of Earth magnetic field has been decaying. And that the non-dipole components have increased in energy to compensate. That's just a theory, by the way. They suggested that the overall energy of Earth's magnetic field has not decreased. However, this is not the case. Any increase in the non-dipole field has been shown to be much smaller than the decrease in the dipole field. Thus, the total energy of the Earth's magnetic field is decaying and therefore supports a recent creation. What about the magnetic fields of the planets? Many of the planets of the solar system also have a strong, strong dipole magnetic fields. Jupiter's magnetic field, for example, is extremely powerful. The magnetic fields of Uranus and Neptune are quite strong. If these planets were really billions of years old, as secular astronomers believe, then their magnetic fields should be extremely weak by now. Yet they are not. A reasonable explanation for this is that these planets are only a few thousand years old, as the Bible teaches. The suggestion that the solar system is only thousands of years old is, of course, an intolerable position for those who believe in particles to people evolution. The vast ages are required for their worldview, and so must be protected at all costs. Therefore, the apparent youth of the universe must be explained away by the addition of auxiliary hypotheses. For example, secular astronomers have proposed that planetary magnetic fields can be recharged over time. Specifically, they invoke the idea of a magnetic dyno magnetic dynamo powering the magnetic fields of the planets. So a magnetic dynamo powering the magnetic fields of the planets. The basic idea is that motion within the planets can generate the magnetic fields so that the total fuel strength will decay. However, the planets do not fit the conditions necessary to drive such a dynamo. The simplest explanation is the solar system is much younger than billions of years old. I'll read this part too. Magnetic dynamo versus magnetic decay. Magnetic and electrical energy can be generated from mechanical energy or motion. This is how the alternator in a car works. Undoubtedly, there are places in the universe where mechanical energy is converted to magnetic fields. It seems likely that the sun under undergoes just such a process. It reverses the magnetic field every 11 years. Many secular astronomers assume that the planets also undergo such a process, though this has not been observed in the present. However, the fact that such processes can occur, and there is good evidence for magnetic reversals preserved in Earth rocks for which there is a respectable creationist theory, does not necessarily solve the problem of strong magnetic fields for old universe. First, an electromagnetic ma magnetic mechanical system must be set up in just the right way in order to, ca to cause the total magnetic field energy to increase. There is no guarantee that vigorous motions which cause magnetic field reversals could actually recharge the total magnetic field to prevent it from decaying with time. In fact, such magnetic field reversals might actually accelerate the decay of total field strength as may be the case with the sun. Second, there are a number of good reasons to believe that the magnetic fields of the planets are not dynamos. They are much more different than that of the sun. The sun is so hot that most of its atoms are ionized. The electrons have been stripped away from the nucleus in a state called plasma. Plasma is highly sensitive to magnetic fields and interacts with them much more strongly than neutral gas. 
The turbulent motions within the sun are constantly generating chaotic bits of magnetism. However, the planets are not made of plasma and do not exhibit the kind of motions we see in the sun. Uh, put up that third picture to give you an illustration of what those motions are. You saw the dipole, the north-south dipole, um, uh, that picture that we showed you of the Earth. Now here is how's the, how, how the sun looks like and what I just read to you in the last three or four paragraphs an 11 year cycle and by the time you get to the 11 year cycle the far picture on the right of the sun you have the magnetic fields and their interaction with neutral grass, gas going in all kinds of different directions and that's what this is talking about and what he's also talking about is this has not been observed even though they like to put that theory out there this has not been observed in the planets and definitely not on planet Earth. And they say, well, it probably could have happened millions and billions of years ago on planet Earth. We were just not there to observe it. Well, you know, that's all good and dandy. But you know what? We only can go what we know now. Not what maybe it ha happened billions of years ago or even millions of years ago. There's no evidence of it. So bottom line is that's what he's talking about after the average period of 11 years between the solar maximums is that picture there on the right hand of the right hand side of that picture is the magnetic fields that's not been observed in the planets well now let's get back to this come back to me however the planets are not made of plasma do not exhibit the kind of motions we see in the sun additionally in the process by which the sun is thought to reverse its magnetic field the rotation acts axis should be almost exactly aligned with the magnetic poles. This is the case for the sun but not for the planets. In fact the planets Uranus and Neptune have magnetic fields which are tilted severely relative to the respective rotation axis. The sun also possess powerful magnetic fields in addition to dipole fields. They're called toroidal T-O-R-O-I-D-A-L magnetic fields. The reason I, reason I spell some of these words because when they tra transcribe this in the future, I could save them some time. Toroidal magnetic fields. What that picture, for instance, on the far right is a toroidal magnetic field, the last picture I showed you of the sun. Instead of having a north-south magnetic pole, toroidal magnetic fields make a complete loop around the sun, forming bands parallel to the solar equator. Put that picture up again so you can see that. No, not that one. The last picture. There you go. Instead of having a north and south magnetic pole, toroidal magnetic fields make a complete loop around the sun. You see, partially in picture number, in the sun number two there, the one in the center, but then you see a complete toroidal field there in the picture in the far right. Instead of having a north-south magnetic pole, toroidal magnetic fields make a complete loop around the sun forming the bands parallel to the solar equator. Come back to me now. At least one band exists in the northern hemisphere and another in the southern hemisphere with opposite polarities. Sunspots generally occur at the latitudes of these toroidal bands. These toroidal magnetic fields are critical in the process of reversing the sun's magnetic field. And yet the planets do not show evidence of any strong toroidal magnetic fields. So why hang on to that science fiction theory? Because they had nothing else, folks. Moreover, there is no evidence that magnetic fields of the planets are reversing today as the sun does. The magnetic fields of the planets today are consistent with the simple decay produced by electrical resistance. Magnetic fields confirm recent creation. Dr. Russ Humphreys, a PhD physicist and a biblical creationist, has produced a model of planetary magnetic fields which can explain their present strengths in terms of biblical creation. In essence, the model estimates the initial strength of each magnetic field at the moment of its creation. 
Then the model computes their present strengths based on 6,000 years of decay from electrical resistance. Impressively, this biblically based model is able to account for the present measured magnetic fields of all the known planets, and even many of the moons as well. Of course, almost any model can be adjusted to fix the existing data. So it is perhaps even more impressive, listen closely, that Dr. Humphrey's model successfully successfully predicted the present magnetic field strengths of the planets Uranus and Neptune before they were measured by the Voyager spacecraft. Specific successful predictions are the mark of good scientific model. Dr. Humphrey also predicted that Mars would have remnant or mag magnetism which has now been confirmed. Remnant magnetism occurs in rocks which cool and solidify in the presence of an external magnetic field. Such remnant magnetism is also found in the moon. This confirms that both the moon and Mars once had strong magnetic fields as expected in the Humphreys model. Planetary magnetic fields strongly support the biblical age of the solar system. So, are you going to use the models that have estimated before we could have proof concerning the measured magnetic fields of certain planets and even our moon or you're going to go with the science fiction theories out there of well this might have happened or that might have happened without no physical proof that we can see now that it ever happened in the first place that's the question but it doesn't fit the narrative. There's a different source on the Earth's magnetic field. <clears throat> in 1835, the scientist Gauss, A G A U S S G A U S S, carried out a worldwide survey of the strength of the magnetic field. From his measurements, he worked out the power of the magnetic field was. 8.56 amps and a whole lot of other things behind it which is not important for this study. This was checked a few years later by other experts and found to be instead of 8.56 8.45. This has continued to be measured over many years and there has been a consistent fall in value. T.G. Barnes, a creation scientist who has written books and articles on the magnetic field of the Earth, by examining the measured values mathematically, found that the half-life of the magnetic field was about 1,400 years. The implications of what the magnetic field would have been in the past poses a tremendous problem for orthodox scientists and evolutionists. With a value of 8.56 back in 1835, then 1400 years earlier the value would have been 17.12. 2800 years earlier the value would have been 34.24 and so on. I want to read that again because this is important to understand. When a value, with a value of 8.56, remember we're talking about the strength of the magnetic field here. With a value of 8.56 in 1835, then 1400 years earlier the value would have been 17.12. 2800 years earlier the value would have been 34.24 and so on. By continuing this calculation backwards in time, it can be demonstrated for ages more than about it can be determined that for ages more than about 10,000 years ago the circulating electrical currents necessary to generate this large magnetic field would have had the power of a magnetic star and the currents would have generated so much heat that life on earth would have been impossible like I said in the beginning we all be toast 
got to read that one more time so it sinks in. It can be demonstrated that for ages more than about 10,000 years ago, the circulating electric currents necessary to generate this large magnetic field would have had the power of a magnetic star and the currents would have generated so much heat that life on Earth would have been impossible. The above evidence has ensured that the work of T.G. Barnes has been rejected by evolutionists. Although evolutionists have no good explanations as, how, as to how it actually happens, they have put forward the reversal theory of the Earth magnetic field many times in the past, taking thousands of years for one reversal at intervals of millions of years. It is intriguing the various ways in which secular science will go to such desperate lengths to avoid the most obvious solution that can explain the decrease in, an, in Earth's magnetic field. When they can't argue against the science, they come up with more theories. I, have, I believe I have shown, shown you that with every subject about this universe that we've covered so far. The only counterpunch they have is theories. Nothing they have visibly seen or can prove, only things that they can speculate on. It might have happened this way. And they want us to believe that they got the answers. Now I'm just reading you information that summarizes the whole study of this magnetic field and especially how important it is to life on this earth. If you want to study on this, plenty of material on it, plenty of books on it. On both sides. But when you analyze the material out there like I have, the evolutionists only have theory. We come back, if you want to call us creationists, I don't even call myself creationist, I call myself one that studies the Word of God and have, over my lifetime, come to believe that it is definitely God's Word, the truth, and it provides the necessary information that we could establish our faith on have concrete faith, not quicksand faith, but concrete faith. Now where was I? <clears throat> the simple fact is that a circulating current slowly being reduced by electrical resistance of the earth is a perfectly adequate explanation of all the measured phenomenon. The problem has been made even more acute for evolutionists by the fairly recent discovery that the half-life of Earth's magnetic field is not 1400 years on which T.G. Barnes bases calculations but 830 years. 830 years. Hmm, isn't that interesting? As we advance in the scientific knowledge that we can obtain it has taken it from 1400 years now to 830 years. At the 1400 year level, there's no way beyond 10,000 years any thinker survive. But what about 830 years? This would make the age of the Earth younger still. And when you do the numbers, folks, it supports an Earth between six and seven thousand years old. That is the scientific facts. This is not theory. It is interesting that although evolutions are stuck when it comes to providing explanation for the reversal theory, a nuclear physicist by the name of Dr. Russell Humphreys has an intriguing explanation of how these reversals could occur very quickly and as opposed to thousands of millions of years. And he goes into that. And I don't think I'm going to bore you with all those details. You can read it up for yourself if you want to. The 
Your Earth magnetic field is not only a good navigational aid and a shield from space particles, it is, a powerful, it is powerful evidence against evolution and billions of years. The clear decay pattern shows the Earth could not be older than about 10,000 years. But with a new 830-year calculation, it would bring it down to six to 7,000 years. The fact is, Earth mag mag magnetism is running down. The world's wide, the world, this worldwide phenomenon could not have been going on for more than a few thousand years, despite the probability of swapping directions many times. Evolution theories are not able to properly explain how magnetism, magnetism could have sustained itself for billions of years. Now here, everybody's worried about climate change. It is 2020 right now. We're worried about climate change. If people actually knew the truth, if people looked into this subject matter for themselves. And I believe one of the reasons why the evolutionists don't want to even bring it out because they don't want to create a fear and a panic and chaos in these end of days. This earth will not survive that much longer because without a magnetic field shielding us We cannot exist. And decay is still happening today. And it's going to happen tomorrow. And it's going to keep happening until it comes to the point. So they come up with these theories. They try to explain their evolutionary theories away and how old this universe and this planet it is. But the, I think there's also another agenda behind it. They know the truth. And they know if they don't come up with theories that give some type of hope. For instance, the reversal theory, we would live in a whole different kind of chaotic existence right now. And most of this information is kept in the dark. Ask yourself, have you ever done the calculations? Have you ever given the information? And I'm just summarizing. Have you ever given the informa information that clearly points out that there's not much more time for this planet Earth the way it exists today. At best, maybe another millennium and a half, which brings up a whole other issue in the scriptures. But I'll get to that. Now, I believe this is interesting. It's a must need to know information that supports scripture. Psalms 145.6 They will tell the power of your awesome works. That's why I'm adding to my prayers and my thanks to the Lord. Thank you for this magnetic field. Another thing that gives us the opportunity to exist on this planet. The way we exist today. And the rest of that verse, by the way, goes, and I will proclaim your great deeds. And that's what we're about in this ministry, is proclaiming Jesus and what he's done for all of us in so many ways. You can't count them all, friends, is what I'm trying to say. Arm yourselves with the truth, because the truth will set you free. Now, I summarize this. I was tempted to do several weeks on just the magnetic field, but I think that's just enough information. I think you've come to trust me and what I present here, that it's been researched out. If you want to do more yourself, go, go at it. A lot of it's mundane, boring stuff, because reading scientific works and explanations and commentaries can be quite boring. I try to reduce it down to things that at least will hopefully keep people's attention long enough to hear the truth and hear it out. Now, if you find this fascinating, you found, find this something to be thankful for the Lord for, why don't you let me know? More importantly, let Him know. Play a song. I want to hear from you.